This week in Service Academy football, it was a bountiful harvest of winning games for the Service Academies. For Air Force, the Falcons end their regular season with an explanation mark against UNLV as Air Force tops the 500-yard mark in rushing in just one game, closing out the regular season without throwing a single pass. That's what Air Force football is about. For the Black Knights, their victory at Liberty was all about getting ahead early and holding on. I know what to say after that one. Holy moly, it's like two different halves. And for Navy, the midshipmen had their most complete game of the season against Temple, and the scoreboard proves it. It was huge. It was huge to get this win. We'll take a 38-14 victory anytime. And now it's time to count down to the 122nd matchup between Army and Navy and the final game of the 50th anniversary of the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. We got two weeks to get ready for the biggest game of the year. We're going to try to do our very best to not let Army beat Army. We'll have the 411 on last week's action and the lead up to the Army and Navy matchup as we go behind the lines on this edition of the Academy Football Report. Welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Graham Knight. Ah, Academy football fans, the regular season has now wrapped up for Air Force with a convincing victory over UNLV. And the headline should read, Air Force ends the regular season leading all of FBS in rushing. More about that in a moment. Right behind Air Force is Army, who is second in rushing and who's also coming off a convincing win over Liberty, 31 to 16. But not too far behind Air Force and Army is Navy, seventh in rushing and also coming off a convincing win over Temple. 38-14. Hopefully you've picked up on the theme of this show. If not, it's convincing. There's a lot to unpack in the next half hour, including two previews of the 2022 season. But we start with Air Force. Yes, we know Air Force still has a bowl game to look forward to, and it looks like the Falcons will be playing in the Armed Services Bowl on December 21st. That will be officially announced on December 5th. But prior to the Falcons game this past Saturday, there was still hope that Air Force might make a championship game. But by kickoff, the Falcons knew their slim hopes of making the Mountain West championships had been snuffed out by virtue of a Utah State win and a Boise State loss. So all that was left was to send the seniors out in style at the final home game of the season at Falcon Stadium. And they did it with a 48-14 thrashing of the Rebels, the likes of which hasn't been seen in a decade. It was a rather subdued football afternoon with the cadet corps mostly absent because of the Thanksgiving break. This senior day included a group of six scheduled to graduate in just two weeks, and they decided to go out in dominant fashion. It was a neat way for those seniors, their last game here at Falcon Stadium. I thought we played pretty solid football across the board. You look at the special teams defensively and being able to move the ball forward uh, with our running game. The day could not have started any better for the Falcons. On the opening kick, UNLV's return man fumbled the ball and Air Force recovered at the Rebel 14-yard line. Warren Bryant, making his first start of the season, directed a three-play drive in just a minute, with Brad Roberts rushing all three plays, including a one-yard TD run to give Air Force a 7-0 lead. And that score would foreshadow what was in store for the rest of the day. On the next drive, UNLV fumbled again, and again it was recovered by the Falcons. This time, a nine-play, 49-yard drive resulted in Roberts' second score of the day to go up 14-zip, and the route was on. The Falcons had five possessions in the first half, four resulting in points, and a 24-point shutout lead at halftime. They had a 181-86 first-half edge in total yards, all on the ground, but that was just a precursor to what was to come. With first-string quarterback Hazeek Daniels out with a non-COVID illness, Falcons head coach Troy Calhoun decided to rotate three quarterbacks, sometimes within the same drive. That included sophomore Zach Larrier, who is also the defending Mountain West 200-meter track champ. He finished off the first possession of the second half with a 12-yard touchdown run to make it 31-zip. We just kind of felt like there were different things that each guy would be able to do, and we wanted to get him in there uh, just to see. Uh, we thought the earlier the better, you know, being able to play and run the floor a little bit, at least get some minutes. Possession was the watchword of the day. UNLV had the ball for less than four minutes in the second half and only 30 seconds in the entire fourth quarter. Our offense, man, they held the ball forever. Like in the fourth quarter, they held the ball for 14 minutes and 30 seconds. Like that's, that's almost unheard of. So just when your offense is able to hold the ball like that, it, make, it makes our job easier. In fact, the Falcons held onto the ball for nearly 41 minutes, racking up 26 first downs. 
Air Force's offensive dominance came courtesy of the offensive line, nicknamed the Diesel, anchored by senior guard Hawk Wimmer, the only lineman to start every game this season. The Air Force ground game put up 511 yards rushing, and the front five have been named semifinalists for the Joe Moore Award, honoring the top offensive line in college football. Big props to the offensive linemen. Uh, they created great running lanes, and everybody executed pretty well today. Not only did Air Force earn all of its yardage on the ground, the Falcons didn't even attempt a single pass. The last time that happened, November 2012. Emmanuel Michel led the Falcons in rushing with 123 yards and a score. But Roberts finished with 98 yards on the afternoon and ended the regular season as the Mountain West rushing champ with 1,279 yards on the year. Defensively, the Falcons held UNLV to just 214 yards of offense on the game and came up with five sacks, one from Vince Sanford, who finished the season fourth in the conference with 9.5 sacks. And for the seniors? I think it's a good way to go out. I can just give all the thanks to the rest of the defense and the coaches, uh, the play calling, the way everybody else played to open up stuff for me. All I can say is thank you, and it's just been a blessing. Technically, the Falcons and Utah State share the Mountain Division title. The Aggies and San Diego State, the only two conference teams to beat the Falcons, will play for that title this weekend.